Yes, we're back. After almost three months. Oh my god. Took it to my normal international. I forgot. Oh, it was my batteries and um, a couple other things. And because I wasn't using depth, as I last stated. Well, they were telling me that, hey, um, just because you, uh, the computer says that I'm, there's no issues. So I said, isn't there a way you can check to see if, A, it's frozen or something like that? Oh, no, no, that would be too much time. So I took it over to the other rush in Carroll Stream. Talked to them. They at least listened to me. So I, so uh, when they did the inspection, they said, well, it's not throwing anything on the computer. I said, I already told you that it wasn't going to throw anything on the computer. So I said, um, can you have them, like, check? the heater out you know manually to see if that's the issue sits there sits there call me back or call me up and I guess my brakes on my front drive tandem were down to a quarter inch so I had to replace those so I said um, when I originally went in I said let's because of the um, bulletin, I see a Cummins bulletin. I seen they said to change a dozer valve and filter every 200,000 miles. So I said, I don't know when this thing's ever been changed. So uh, they got they ordered the parts, parts came in, they did the brakes, then they put the dozer valve in. And as soon as they put the doze, the old dozer valve was like ready to fall out. I mean. The gasket that hold, the two O-rings that hold it in were gone. Um, it was just sitting rattling in there. So it's a good thing I changed it. As soon as they put it in and connected it up, all of a sudden it gets an error message stating that um, the depth is frozen. So I guess they had three Cummins guys looking at it. Um, I think they recalibrated it. That's what he said. I, I doubt if they did that. They probably just looked through the programming. Because it never threw a, an error message that it wasn't using depth. And they didn't understand why. So finally they get it. Um, they narrowed it down to that my depth pump wasn't working. Which is kind of what I thought in the first place. And I told them, you know, why don't you manually check that before you get too in-depth in this thing. Still change the dozer valve, because like I said, it, I don't know when it was ever changed. So now uh, the depth pump's been changed, um, dozer valve, and the filter. Now this has been... I finally got it back after two and a half months. So I've switched carriers. I left GP and I've come over to Merrick's. Well, that was a, a joke in itself because um, Illinois, I had to wait because they didn't give me an answer right away. So when I did um, my plates, I renewed them under, because Illinois requires you to have uh, who's doing your safety on them. Um, but I had to wait for the renewal. They wanted to wait until the renewal got here and that before they I could come in and do my orientation. Finally, I comes in and he goes, only Illinois requires it and they don't even pay that much attention to it. So I'm waiting to see. I'm not gonna change it yet. Um, I got my new, my renewed registration and that. So I figured I'm going to start on Monday. Well, then they got this thing with they want non-trucking liability, which really doesn't fit what I do because at least with OIDA, non-trucking liability is for like if I was using this for a personal vehicle when I'm at home. I don't use it for a personal vehicle when I'm at home. Um, they said 
I said, then I, I think they want me to just be covered like when I'm, if I deliver and I don't have, uh, I don't have anything in it and I'm going to a truck stop to go wait on a load. So she goes, oh no, that's unladen liability. So um, on Friday she goes, I'll let you know Monday because they couldn't understand that I wasn't a tanker and that when I'm empty, I'm empty and it's a just 53 foot dry box. So Monday I get the answer, go into the office, meet my fleet, one of my fleet managers. Um, we talk, I give the girl the thing and she goes, well, I don't know. She goes, I'll get back to you. Well, she never got back to me. So Tuesday, yesterday I came, I told, um, my fleet manager, well, I'll go out Wednesday because I need to straighten out my truck because when they were working on it, I forgot to take a few things off the floor and they moved them all in my bed. So I had to straighten everything out, put all my food in, my normal stuff. So I plug in my uh, tablet for my ELD in that thing doesn't stop, won't charge. Tried eight different cables. I have four different points that I can plug in to charge, still wouldn't charge. So now I'm at the terminal. I gotta wait until somebody gets in to talk to them about switching this thing out so that I can actually go out on a load because they dispatch you through um, Keep Trucking at. So that's where I'm at right now. So um, as soon as I get rolling on my first load, I'll let you know. Got kind of lucky. Um, they had a load sitting at the yard, so no deadhead. After they take out all their deductions and that, I should get about two bucks a mile. It's going down to Georgetown, Texas. So it'll pay me about two grand to go down there. Sorry, and uh, it's only 29000 and I guess I'll dad head from there to Houston and pick up a hazmat load out of Houston going to wherever, so um, he's already got kind of a plan going on, so that's a good thing. So we'll see you in a little bit once we get rolling. There's a little uh, discrepancy. The dispatch has their bill to address on it and the consignee is uh, another address so I had to uh, send him a picture of the bill of lighting so he can confirm that that address is the correct address so we'll see you in a little bit once we get rolling well we are on the roll got lucky and like I said they had a load right at the yard no dead head is it the greatest bang? no is it not too bad? Yeah. It's 28,000. Um, just scaled it. I'm 11, 8, because I'm full of fuel and depth. 11, 8, 40, 23, 7, 60, and 26, 2, 40. So I'm 61, 8, 40. So if I take off 30,000, I'm about 33 something empty with their trailer, the dry van, so I can pull 45, 45.5, but going down to Georgetown, Texas. Now when I filled up that, it was only like a half a gallon, but when I first pulled it in there, <laughs> took it to the shop. I was like over full and I haven't done very much driving so for bobtailing a half a gallon I guess isn't too bad so we'll see the next time I fuel how much um, how much depth I use. I'm hoping it'll be at least a gallon so then we know the problem's resolved. But directions to go down there, 55 down to uh, 44, 44 to 
69, so... It's one half mile. Oh, Turn yeah. left on I-55 south. I'll have south. to pay the first toll, and I'll get it back, I guess. Or not even have to pay the first toll. Then 69 down to 30, 30 across to 35, and then 35 down. So tomorrow, when I take my break, I'm going to have to figure Turn out where left to stop. Traffic light. That might even be between Dallas and, hopefully there's something between Dallas and Georgetown. <laughs> My thing is this thing's a little heavier on the tail, which this thing really doesn't like. So I may at some point uh, slide it back a couple notches. If I drop a thousand, that'd be twenty-three seven, so it'll be twenty-four seven. And I'll be twenty-five two forty, so That won't be horrid. The only thing is I use drive wise. So this this will be interesting. The only bad thing here is Pilot J, Pilot's and Flying J, but you can't use, you can't use like an off-brand Pilot, like a Pilot Thornton's. It's got to be a strict Pilot, which is pretty limiting, especially since I paid, what, three eighty nine. dollars supposed to get a six. Six cent discount. So it'll be three eighty three. When I could have went over to Love and only paid three something. Three seventy I think, three seventy five. So even with the fuel discount, sometimes it's not that good. Alright. Man, I haven't had to do this in ages. First time in a long while I've ever had to do a 30 minute break. Plus, I slid it back. I was trying to do four spots, but missed, and did three spots. So, that'll be a little bit better. made it to the rest area that I wanted to get to tomorrow morning get up to a pre-trip run over to Flying J and Joplin fuel and then head to the Flying J and Waco and we'll be good then I'll make my delivery on Friday morning so we will see you in the morning have a good night good morning good morning did our pre-trip got a couple more minutes before we go Gonna run and get some fuel. We'll head to Waco. And 
and when it gets light out, I'll get some road footage. Um, maybe I'll do some as I come out of the uh, rest area because there's some lights here. We'll see. All right, we'll see you in a little bit, and we'll start to get going on our day. It's kind of weird being able to drive all day and do my break and then get going again. Um, I haven't done this and I don't know when. So it's been a while. Alright, see you in a little bit. Alright, let's get out of here. Make like a newborn baby and head out. I guess I could have pulled through like they did. Part there. Alright, let's get out of here. And I think we're fixed. We use three, ran about 520 miles, use about 3.2 gallons of depth, so I am happy. decided to get off the big cabin. It's funny, I almost saved, <laughs> it wanted me to, originally it wanted me to get off here, 
Then when I replotted in for going to Texarkana, it wanted me to go another 50 miles and get off and come over to here. So I don't know why it changed its mind. But uh, got up a big cabin. All of a sudden, it saved almost 30, 40 miles. So, yeah, sometimes you gotta watch the way it originally routes you, and then when you add another stop, like for a truck stop, find out if it's taking you the same way. Because it was just taking me another 51 miles down the highway, and then let me get off and go back to this road anyway. So, plus, probably would have cost me another toll. And for some odd reason, I don't know why. Can't believe Oklahoma can't do, uh, I mean, Ohio and I think Indiana both let you use a credit card or a debit card. Oklahoma does it. So, I didn't have another amount of cash anyway, so I would have had to get off a big cabin anyways to get cash, so now that it saved me some miles, I'll just get some cash at the line J that way, in case, uh, depending on where Houston it sends me, I want to say Houston's got a, a freaking total road somewhere there. This way, at least I'll have cash. I don't know why these states that have toll roads can't become part of Easy Pass. Almost every major company has it. They got a freaking How often I come down here. I'm thinking of uh, and today's the day of delays. Jeez, you have uh, construction back there. Don't even know what they're doing because I didn't see anybody in there. Now it looks like car or truck is on. God, they give me a friggin' load. I deliver at 8 in the morning. Then I got a three hour drive up to Lancaster. And I got to find a truck stop as close as I can. Because I don't pick up. The earliest I can get there is 3 in the check in is 3 in the afternoon. And, uh. It doesn't pick up till. It, but not supposed to pick up till six.
looks like a curve right now. Where are all these things burning out? Truck yes yesterday, I think. Now car. truck stop man this is besides that um truck fire i think yesterday today it was construction an accident more construction it added an extra hour to my time to get here i should have been here at 2 30 and didn't get here till like 3 35 on that, um, but got checked in, gonna grab some dinner, and uh, tomorrow morning I'll deliver, they still haven't sent me the pickup information, so I don't know where I'm going yet, um, we shall see, alright, have a good night, we'll see you tomorrow.